Since the start of the Hamas-Israeli war, the number of dead in Gaza has reached 34,388. This was reported by the Ministry of Health of the Gaza Strip. The IT was reported that the number of injured people reached 77 for 37. It was noted that a total of 261 soldiers of the Israeli army were killed during the ground operation in Gaza. The IT should be recalled that on October 7, 2023, the Hamas group attacked the territories controlled by Israel. In response, the Israeli army started military operations in Gaza. On November 24, a four-day humanitarian ceasefire was reached between Hamas and Israel, with the mediation of Egypt and Qatar according to the agreement, a group of hostages held in the Gaza Strip were released in exchange for the release of Palestinian teenagers and women in Israeli prisons. Later, the ceasefire regime was extended for two more days under the same conditions. On December 1, the Israeli army started military operations in Gaza again, saying that Hamas violated the ceasefire recently, Hamas responded to a letter signed by 18 world powers urging captives release, says it is open to proposals that address permanent ceasefire, basic rights of Palestinians. Hamas says it has received an official response to its position on ceasefire talks and will study the proposal before submitting its response, the group's deputy chief in Gaza Khalil al haya said in a. Statement, more than six months into Israel's military operations in the Gaza Strip, over half of its population of 2.2 million is crammed into the southern city of Rafa. The UN has warned of a humanitarian catastrophe and Israel has faced international criticism for limiting the amount of aid reaching civilians by land. Germany plans to prepare U.S. troops for battles with Russia on NATO's Eastern Front. German army commanders are drawing up plans for how they will feed thousands of American soldiers and refuel their tanks as they move toward NATO's Eastern Front as part of a secret document outlining Germany's readiness for war. In particular, in an interview with Faz, Bundeswehr Lieutenant General Andre Bodeman said that the army is drawing up a new long-term security plan with an emphasis on civil defense. It is noted that most of the planning details are state secrets, but a senior officer did reveal that part of the planning process involves logistics to feed the huge number of American soldiers, mainly civilians. If, for example, there was a US division moving east, thousands of tanks, thousands of soldiers, then they would need to be fed and the tanks would need to be refueled or perhaps repaired, Bodeman said. According to him, the Bundeswehr's logistical support would probably be linked to our own soldiers at the front. This means we would need maximum civilian input. The convoy would receive fuel from gas stations or civilian transport. The Red Cross would provide medical assistance and food would come from civilian catering. It would be a classic case, the military man said. In this context, the Telegraph notes that Bodeman's comments come during British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak's visit to Berlin, where he said European countries should follow Britain's example in increasing defence spending to ensure continued US commitment to NATO. General Bodeman's statements are the latest evidence that Germany is trying to make itself ready for war in the face of a potential armed conflict with Russia within the next five years. Although he did not specify which Eastern Front Germany would defend, NATO officials are increasingly concerned that Vladimir Putin will launch an invasion of NATO's eastern flank if his forces ultimately win in Ukraine. Putin's ally. Future of the world will be decided in Ukraine. The Ukraine conflict is among the major events that will determine the future of the world and the West is emerging weaker from it. Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko claimed the leader of Belarus, a close Russian ally, addressed the situation in Ukraine during a keynote speech to the All Belarusian People's Assembly, a gathering of officials and public figures. He contrasted Kiev's policies with those of Minsk, arguing that unlike its southern neighbor, his nation has preserved its independence under Western pressure. Everyone understands that today's Ukraine is a military range, where the future of the world order is partially decided. The largest nuclear powers indirectly, and now even directly, are waging a war on its territory, Lukashenko stated. Meanwhile, his authorities have sunk to the level of striking a bargain with the West to exchange weapons for the lives of Ukrainians. Watching this is painful, he added. Kiev has miscalculated, Lukashenko argued, because whoever is willing to serve a master for scraps will sooner or later lose. Ukraine is risking its statehood after betraying its past and traditions, he also warned. The Belarusian leader described the entire conflict as the latest clash between the West and the East, 
and suggested that neither side has become stronger. The outcome of the confrontation will not save the existing order, Lukashenko further predicted. He urged the US and its allies to accept that their future role will be restricted as one of several centers of power that determine world affairs. The US and its allies believe that they can supply Ukraine with enough weaponry to exhaust Russian military forces and material. Ukraine hopes that Western support intensifies enough and lasts long enough to push Russia out of the country. Russia believes that it can wait until the West is tired of supporting Ukraine and then move to control the country with a pro-Russian puppet government backed by Russian military might. All sides are exhausted by this conflict. Many are wondering how long they can continue operating at this level of intensity.